It's episode 35 of the Lichtenstein Challenge and we've got a big match against FC Michelin this evening. If we don't win, there is a chance we may not qualify for the next stage of the Conference League. Can we do it? Let's see. Roll that title. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 35 of the Liechtenstein Challenge here with Fedoz. And I'm just going to go straight into the schedule with regards to how things have been going since that last episode where we lost 3-1 to Besiktas. I'll show you the league table and then I'll also show you the conference league table as well and the fixtures in both of those. So let's get into it. Our first match was a game against Basel and we won this 4-3. We were 3-0 up at half-time thanks to goals from Sommer and Lampert. They got back into the game though, making it 3-2 um, thanks to goals from Tazwa and Rechaj. Um, Elias Messonero made it 4-2 for us though, but Basel did make it a little bit nervous. Um, with that goal from Joel Montiero, but a very capable victory and three points for the Lichtensteiners. Following that, it was a 4-0 defeat away from home to young boys. We were completely outclassed in this match, and it was a really disappointing result to take. Following that young boys defeat, um, we lost 1-0 to Aru. This was a really frustrating uh, result. And um, we probably deserved a draw in the end, but our scoring was just not on point for this match. However, we did follow this up with a 4-1 victory at home to Winterfell. Goals from Padel and Oydendenk securing the victory for us and another three points in the bag. In our second match in the Europa Conference League phase, we took a trip to Podbrezova of Slovakia. Unfortunately, in this match, we lost 3-0, and to be honest, I think this was thoroughly undeserved, but they were top of the group at this stage. Goals from Rami, Martinez, and Cardoso, but if you see the stats, we had 26 shots, 9 on target. They had 10 and 3 shots on target, and all of their shots on target ended up in a goal. So this was a really frustrating match, and um, by the time the third game came around, it was a must-win. We did, however, comfortably beat ourselves 4-0. An own goal from Nico Gunva, which was slightly disappointing, but Tobias Feniger and Luke Nataro making it 4-0 to us, and we are in the semi-final of the Liechtenstein Cup. Then a mad game against one of our bogey teams, Luzerne. This was 1-1 at half-time, and it finished 3-3 in the end, thanks to a Gabriel Vinatoru pen. It was 3-2, and it was looking like we were going to get three points against Luzerne. But unfortunately, Kadak scored a pen in the 71st minute, but we held on for a really tough but important draw. We then followed that up with a 2-1 win, a much-needed win against Malada Balaslova um, from the Czech Republic. Goals from Sommer and Lampert. This really didn't kick off until the second half, but it was a much-needed win and put us in a good position going into the next game. Then a comfortable 1-0 win away from home thanks to Theo Goliard's pen. Um, I want to say we deserve this, but it probably would have been a fair draw. But in the end, that doesn't matter. We uh, secured the three points. And unfortunately, we lost to our bogey team yet again. As you can see, one shot on target scored um, from Krasniki. Um, we deserved more than what we got from this game. But as you can see from the ratings on the right-hand side, Zurich's defence and goalkeeper were just fantastic and we just couldn't break them down. And then a 3-0 home win against Vojavidnia of Serbia. Goals from Claudio, a Brazilian midfielder, and David Azoa. Um, another game where we deserved a win and that put us on six points in the league phase. Unfortunately, this is where things started to go a little bit um, bad for us in terms of the league and the Europa Conference League. So we got a 1-1 draw, luckily, against St. Gallen. We probably didn't deserve this, but um, it was away from home 
goal from Slimani um, from St. Gallen was cancelled out by Luki Nataro. He's been a decent um, impact sub for us this year, and I'm hoping to keep him around, even though he's not particularly fantastic in terms of the uh, stats um, and rating as a 25-year-old. I still want to keep him around just because he's a good overall impact sub. Then a 2-1 defeat um, at home to Toon. Daniel De Santos with two goals in the 12th and 15th minute. David Azua did get a goal in the 19th minute, but we just really couldn't capitalise on this and lost ground um, in the league um, to Toon. Um, so it was a really disappointing match. Um, yeah, we probably deserved a draw out of this, but then again, we probably shouldn't have beaten Savet. So, you know, it comes and goes. And then another frustrating away defeat uh, to Kukarachki, um, who play in Serbia. Um, they were 1-0 up at half-time, and as you can see from the stats yet again, I think we were really unlucky not to get um, a victory out of this game, or at least a draw. 15 shots, 5 on target. They had 8 shots, 4 on target. Our XG was much higher. I seem to be noticing that we do get high XG in these games, but we just don't seem to take our chances. I'm going to go over that in a minute or two, why I think that may be the case. And then just before the Michelin game, we got a 0-0 draw against Lausanne. Probably a fair result. Um, and switched our formation back to the 4-1-4-1, which we might use this evening. So in terms of the league phase, we really need to be looking over our shoulder. Um, the league, I would say, apart from the top four is very tight um even down from 11th i think stad lewis and ushi unfortunately they are already gone they've only won one match this year uh it was against aru um interestingly enough but eight points 10 points behind Savet, unless they get some form of miracle i think it's going to be a tough season especially with the goal difference Savet are on 18 points after 20 games we are on 22 points with only 19 games played so far. Um, we do have a game in hand, and that is against Stad Lausanne Ushi. But as I say, we are looking over our shoulders. Winterfur, Toon, and Aru seem to be getting a gap over us at the moment on four points. Zurich on 28, and St. Gallen on 31. But it's a very tight league this year. Basel are the front runners at the moment, but don't rule out Lausanne. Young boys are Lausanne in this title race. I think we probably are looking at a season where we maybe need to aim for that 7th, 6th position yet again. I was hoping we are going to improve on last year, but I don't think that is going to be the case based on the first 19 games. I'm just going to go through the Conference League phase and we'll get straight into this match against Midtjylland. Here is the Conference League phase and we are in a bit of a precarious situation at the moment. We find ourselves in 23rd place. So we haven't had that great season like we did last year where we finished in the top eight. We will have to play a playoff match if we do win tonight. But as I say, it is very precarious. We are on six points. Michelin are currently on five points and there are a couple of teams that are on four points. If we get a draw, we may qualify, but we can't guarantee on other teams. We need to win tonight. And we're playing Michelin, who are in 26th position themselves. They haven't had a good campaign, just like ourselves. If they win, they will overtake us, and that will put pressure on us, especially with the likes of FCSB. Boleslav, Mulder, Lahn are just lurking around. Um, there is a couple of teams that are on three points. I think we are safe um, from those, but we need to keep an eye on the teams that have got four points, because potentially... They could take us over, um, and also the teams that are on five points, including Michelin. But hopefully we can get a win. I'm just going to go quickly into one of the reasons why I think we haven't been scoring so much, and then we'll get into the match. So here's the squad overview, just for a second. Um, as you can see, our top goal scorers this season are Oydendink and Pudel. But the main reason I'm quite worried about our situation is, you may remember our Romanian... Superstar, um, Gabriel Vinatoru, um, he has not been scoring the goals I was hoping that he was going to. This season, he has only scored one goal, which was from a penalty, and one assist. And I'm starting to worry about that form that he had in Romania. Um, I'm not seeing any form of consistency in his cons, but his form has been atrocious. Um, I don't know why. 
I tried moving him around in terms of an advanced forward, a pressing forward, and I think I'm stuck on the idea that he's going to be a complete forward now. He's not solely to blame, but I was hoping he would perform much better in terms of the goals um, for us this year. He has been dropped for this evening when we get into that team. Um, but yeah, it's a bit worrying that we're not scoring as many goals as we were in the last couple of seasons. Um, hopefully, that will improve going forward. This is the team I'm going to go with for the match against Michelin. So it's going to be Holzman in goal. Messonero is going to be playing at right back. I've not been convinced by Quatra and Siddiqui so far this year. They've been inconsistent and um, Messonero wants more game time. So I kind of want to appeal to that i've stuck him on the wing back defend and the reason why i've stuck him on that is he's not particularly a wing back support but when i've had him in this role in the past he scored a lot of goals from corners so that's the reason why it's going to be christian weber next to rego um araj on the left martin sherbert is going to play as the anchor azua has moved a little bit further forward with lampert i want to try something different this evening summer and natoro on the wings and oindeng up front and as you can see vinatoru on the bench feniger as well selly is also on the bench he's not been happy he wants to go out on loan there's a couple of players that are like that this at this moment um claudio is also on the bench rocher is on the bench as well and setford is on the bench because Hulsman does want more game time and I kind of want to appeal to that. Um, but if he doesn't start performing, Setford will take his place. So that's the team. I'm going to go through the opposition instructions and fingers crossed we can win this match this evening. This is it. Um, it's pretty much all or nothing here against Michelin. They're going with their 4-4-2 formation. When I was looking at the opposition instructions, it looks like a very good team. We are going with our 4-1-4-1 this evening. Um, we've changed it around. We might revert that back to the 4-3-3 or the 3-4-3 that we've been playing, which has done okay. Yeah, let's see how we get on. Hopefully, we can get a victory in Denmark this evening, or at best, a draw. Mitchell, I've got a highlight now. Hassam. Can we deal with this? Araj is not doing a good job. We're just going to let him walk in, are we? Just keeping an eye on the table as well. And we're currently okay at the moment, but anything changes with those teams that are below us, like Rakao or FCSB, they're playing Sarajevo as well. FCSB have just won or winning their game so far. Goal difference is helping us to be fair. Dunfermline are getting beat, which is another benefit. But we need to focus on ourselves, and this is not very good. And is that a penalty? It looks like it. Yeah. Can Olsman save it? Gomez. Yeah, he was putting that away no matter what. That makes things interesting. We have to go for it now. Holzman really poor there. Yeah, we are just going to probably drop out. I think we need to go positive. And encourage the entire team. A draw might do for us at the moment, but yeah, we need something. I might take us off this fourth. Yeah, I'm going to take us off this. 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one, because there's no point anymore. Um, and just go for it. We haven't turned up for this match for whatever reason. But yeah, we'd need a monumental collapse from somebody, I think, above us. 45 minutes and we haven't really done anything and now they've got a corner this is not looking good it's 2-0 a goal from Pitta 
We're going to have to go all out in the second half. This is not looking good. Really poor defending from us there as well. But this Michelin team is very, very good. I'm going to kick them up the backside, to be fair. Um, and we are going to make some changes. It is going to be Russia and Messonero are going to come off. I think I'm going to bring Quattro on. Um, Summer's not having the greatest of games, but neither is looking at Taro. I'm going to leave it as it is now, but if we get to a, a serious situation, we're going to have to bring some changes on. Summer's really injured now. Probably should have took him up at half time. I might swap the wingers around in a minute. Yeah, we're struggling a little bit to create anything here. Dunfermline have got back at 2 2 now, which is not good for us. Yeah, changes are needed. Summer for. I think Vinatoru, I just need to give him some form of chance. And then I think Padel, even though he's injured. And we'll leave one sub available. That's not what I want to see from. Uh, that's not what I want to see from my striker. Corner. Lampert with the ball. Azor, Bata Lampert. Bata Lampert. Is that not a pen? Offside. Corner to Michelin. If that had been free now, I think that would have that would have been curtains, but we need something different. I think we need a change in the middle. Um it's probably gonna be Theo Goliard. I'm probably gonna stick him on advanced playmaker attack. Just need something different, you know, something. But it's not looking lightly. Olympia getting beat, Mulder's winning. It's so important to win those first three games in the league phase. It's huge. That's why it was really disappointing that we've uh, we've not done anything. We don't deserve to go through. To be fun, to be honest, we don't deserve to go through. We're not doing anything here as well, which is really frustrating me. Yeah. That is us out of Europe, ladies and gentlemen. A very disappointing way to end the episode. And um, I'm going to take a risk. I I'm really not happy with them at all. Um, yeah. So dra back to the drawing board. I mean, we've made Europe two years in a row now, but... Um, we just haven't took our chances. We were we were that close, you know, to getting through to the the second phase. But Michelin were just, I think, quality wise, they were just much better than us for some strange reason. Um, yeah, that's disappointing because I wanted to go on a bit of a run this year with you, with you guys. Um, let's have a quick debrief then, and um, we'll go from there. Well, with us going out of Europe, that obviously means I don't have any more European fixtures to show. If you do see a game in the fixture list, let me know. But I am thinking of doing what I have normally done, which is racing through um, these remaining Super League fixtures as quick as I can. And let's get on to Season 9. Um, obviously do um, the... Uh, championship or relegation group um so if we're in that we might do that as the last the last game of season eight so it'll be a short it'll be a somewhat short episode um but yeah i think just race through that now and um 
I'll obviously update you with regards to transfers in January. It might be a little bit interesting, and it's probably a case that we're looking at signings for next season. Um, and we're also going to have to judge in terms of who's going to stay and who's going to leave. Um, there's a couple of players just thinking about it. Um, but yeah, a very disappointing performance from us. Um, we've certainly got the ability, um, ability-wise, so it's it's a bit frustrating that I must admit, but maybe maybe next season um, we need to look at getting in better quality instead of looking at those types of players that I've been trying to get in, which is like potential for the future in terms of getting them in as youngsters in Liechtenstein and then building them up next season, maybe just to get us further in the Conference League, maybe get a bit of quality, I don't know. Um, that's something I need to have a think about. Obviously, I'm going to keep signing players that are either Liechtenstein Nationals or we've got the potential of signing youngsters to get them as Liechtenstein Nationals or they have no... Um, international caps so hopefully they'll get picked up by Liechtenstein by the five year period but we need to be signing quality players in terms of that I think going forward but let me know if there's any fixtures there in that list at the moment that you would like to see um, maybe a game that we haven't played I think we played everybody now um, in terms of the Super League and the Challenge League um, so let me know um, but my plan will be to race through the season and I think you'll probably see me at the last game of the season, whether that be the relegation group or the championship group. Hopefully it's the championship group. A disappointing result there with regards to Europe. Um, hopefully we can improve our form going into 2031. Thank you very much for watching the episode so far and if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, especially if you're new. And we will see you for episode 36 in a bit. Take it easy, stay safe. Bye, everybody.